Come on, Mr. Bean. Dig deep, baby. Dig deep. Come on. Come on, you got some moves. I know you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. This is a celebration, baby. This is a celebration. We had a Singer 500A that was dead, and now it's alive. Uh-huh. Eric and Margaret's machine was a sick, sick, sick machine. But it's ready to get the job done now. Come on, let's do a little dance. That's right. Mmm. Ah. Mmm. Come on. Come on, Mr. Bean. Yeah, you know what? You know what it's about. You know what it's about. Come on. All right, let's do a little bit of sewing. Two layers. Now we're up to four. Three, two, and one. Let's have some fun. I better not become a rapper. I'm liking that song a lot. <laughs> I'm liking that song a lot. Woo! All right, Mr. Bean, I'm going to move you to the side. Very good dancing, sir. Very good dancing. Nice dancing. Very nice dancing. Well, if you didn't catch uh, the instant premiere that I did on Margaret and uh, on uh, Eric's 500A singer, and it would have aired uh, just about 24 hours ago, then you really don't know what a miracle it is to see what this machine just did. And we're talking uh, four layers of uh, genuine denim, heavy duty denim stuff. Let me zoom in. Hopefully my camera angle is even remotely close. So four layers of denim is not an, a super easy task. It just isn't. And yet this uh, 500, let me go a little bit further. This Singer 500A just did an absolute uh, spectacular job in every respect from start to finish. That's an absolute bragworthy stitch, the spacing, the formation, uh, the integrity of that stitch, exactly as we want to see it. See if I can bring my camera down a little bit, cause there we go. That's a little bit easier to handle, cause I'm kind of kind of trying to hover it in the air. You know what I mean? So beautiful stitching, four layers of uh, uh, heavy grade denim. We kind of turn it to the side. You can kind of see what we just went through. We turn it the rest of the way over. I'm going to kind of flip it here. Flip, 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 flip. Now we're looking at that lock stitch. And there's just no difference. That lock stitch from start to finish is just absolutely uh, spot on. The spacing, uh, the formation, the integrity of the stitch, uh, exactly as we want to see it. You know, just like the top stitch. Top stitch, lock stitch, top stitch, lock stitch. Are you getting dizzy yet? But there's just no difference. And again, that's not an easy task. Four layers of uh, heavy grade denim. I'm going to throw that to the back as a definite pass. Uh, definite, like, yeah, that's the way it should look. Now let's just jump right into 
uh, a single layer of uh, genuine elk hide. Look at it from the side. That is, if I move the camera, you can look at it from the side. Hold on a sec. I'm trying to do this kind of over my shoulder here. We're trying here. So there's a single layer of genuine elk hide. We're looking at about four or five ounces of uh, processed, chemically processed elk hide. Not an easy task at all. Uh, it's the thick of thick and any of you that deal with hides or have uh, maybe you've got a hunting background or whatever, as soon as you chemically process leather, it raises the piercing threshold through the roof. So here we have about four or five ounces of uh, genuine uh, elk hide and uh, we're going to try to zoom down it with this machine that was virtually dead and now has just a renewed spirit that is inspirational. So let me see if we can get this underneath the presser foot with ease, I might add. And we will buzz down and see how this uh, 500A does sewing this uh, uh, genuine elk hide. All right, are you ready? Let me bring that needle, uh, that, uh, blah. <laughs> let me bring that take up arm all the way to the highest position and we will buzz down. All right, and listen to this machine run, and then we're going to hop over to uh, YouTube, and if you missed that instant premiere, you're going to have an opportunity to see uh, what a difference uh, it is now with this 500A. All right, here we go. Well, that was super easy. No strain, no pain. No groaning, no moaning. This uh, machine just got the job done like a hiccup. Clip the threads on that side. Oops, wrong hand. Just bear with me for a second here, folks. Okay, so here we have our top stitch, which is absolutely spot on. Uh, the spacing, uh, yellow is not the friend of the camera, is it? So the, the spacing, the, the formation is just absolutely spot on. Beautiful stitching from start uh, to finish with uh, this 500 Singer 500A. I must have that angled a little bit differently. Give me a second here. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit easier. I'm, I keep trying to move it and I'm like, hey, that's not lining up. So beautiful stitching from start to finish. That's our top stitch, obviously, uh, through about four or five ounces of uh, genuine elk hide. We turn it over, look again from the side as we're gonna head towards that lock stitch. That is the thick of thick, folks. We're talking four or five ounces of uh, genuine elk hide. And as we go over to that lock stitch, that's brag worthy. There's just no difference. From start to finish, it's just absolutely spot on. So this, uh, four, this uh, four ounces, four or five ounces of uh, genuine elk hide for the lock stitch and Look at that, that's crazy. And the top stitch is just an absolute uh, pass for uh, Eric and for Margaret's uh, Singer 500A. Absolutely beautiful stitching. All right, so I'm gonna throw this to the back. So, so far we've done what, four layers of uh, heavy gray denim. We've done a layer of uh, of a genuine elk hide and uh, this machine is just getting the job done so easy it's absolutely ridiculous and I know what's going on with Mr. Bean over there I gotta go over to Mr. Bean real quick and just show you what he's what he's doing off camera and if you don't think this is a little bit distracting uh, yeah it might be look at him you weren't dancing like that when I had that cool music on. 
There's no way. You were not making moves like that. You were not even close to making moves like that, man. Yeah, now you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Mr. Bean right there. All right, I'll dance with you. I hear you. I'm hearing you. Let's move you over here. Now, don't, don't cut your moves down, because I'm going to jump in on this. You are not doing the moves like you were by that other light. All right, we'll move you back up on the machine. Maybe you'll feel cool there. Yeah, you got a little bit of move going on. All right, I'm gonna join you. I'm gonna join you, because you asked me to. Come on now. All right, I'm gonna pick you up if you're gonna act all shy and stuff, because there's no way. Yeah, all right, you don't want to be picked up, I'll put you back down. I know, I know, I know, you're independent. All right, our break's over, we better jump back into this. We better jump back in, because our, our battery power is getting low, and and we're gonna miss out on some good opportunities. So let's zoom in, let's zoom in. And what we're gonna, look at now, look at now. See the music goes off and all of a sudden you're jumping into it big time. Look at you, look at you. All right, show off. All right, so let's, let's do this before we run out of uh, juice on the camera because we're getting real low. I've got two layers of uh, genuine, uh, Oh, excuse me, genuine. I've got two layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. I'm going to fold it. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. I'm going to fold it once and get us up to four. I'm going to fold us one more time and get us all the way up to eight layers of uh, U.S. Army grade canvas. And we'll see how this uh, 500A does with a task uh, as difficult as this. We're talking eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas, folks. All right, are you ready? Here we go. That was only probably about maybe 30% of the way down on the foot controller, if that. A lot of reserve power now uh, with this machine. A lot more reserve power. All right, let's look at these stitches. And again, I gotta kind of move us around. I'm looking at my battery power and my battery power is way, way, way down there. So here's the top stitch we just laid down, which is absolutely uh, drop dead gorgeous. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Absolutely drop dead gorgeous in every respect. The spacing, the formation from start to finish, is just absolutely, what am I doing? It's absolutely spot. Spot on. Get over there, Scott. Absolutely spot on in every respect. Mr. Bean is still dancing, so he's kind of distracting me just a little bit. And as we turn it to the side, look at the thickness of that. Eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. And now we're looking at that lock stitch, which is equally gorgeous. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull it back for you, make it even easier to see it. It's still pretty easy to see if I don't pull it back, but and I might bump the upper tension up a little bit on that, but that's just a gorgeous, gorgeous stitch. And again, look at it from the end. Eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. So I'm going to throw that to the back as a definite pass, and I am going to hope that our battery holds out a little bit longer, because I wanted to show you a decorative stitch on this too, just for fun. And that's way too big of a piece of material. Let me uh, cut this way down. So one of the built-in cams uh, for this machine, this machine has the ability to uh, have cams inserted and also has cams engineered in uh, as well. 
And uh, the cam setting I have it on right now, I think is kind of a building block one. Let's buzz down and let's see what we get. You ready? Here we go. And I'm going to shorten that stitch just slightly. All right, I got it. Here we go. I didn't give that nearly a long enough run, but that's a way cool stitch. It's one of the one of the stitches that's engineered into uh, this 500A, kind of a building block style, which I, which I think is way cool. And you can also, as I was indicating, there's black cams that you can insert in this. I didn't get any cams from uh, Eric and Margaret when they sent the machine, uh, but obviously uh, they are readily available. And there's our lock stitch, no difference. Absolutely gorgeous lock stitch as well. And uh, the way you access these cams, and again, I'm really nervous about this battery. I don't know what's going on. Maybe my battery is starting to croak or something. Is uh, right in this region right here. The gold knob is going to control the left. The brown knob is going to control the right. And then inside of the top of the lid, they've got a quick reference as far as the settings for the cams that are built into this machine. And then uh, you're, for most of the cams, you're going to set it on uh, the highest setting as far as stitch width. And then uh, you can mess around with uh, the stitch length here. I kind of moved it to about 8 in order to get the outcome that we had on that. So really, uh, uh, really a cool and versatile uh, machine. Also, I'll just show you real quick before my battery dies. Uh, where with most machines you're going to lower the feed dogs. With this one, you're going to raise the throat plate. And there's a little control to the right that allows you to bring it part way up like this, where you can see there's a little ridge there now. And uh, it's reduced to pull on that if you have real delicate fabrics, silks or satins. And then you can bring it all the way up uh, if you want to do freehand embroidery. And you can even remove this uh, plate you're supposed to be able to remove the plate. Come on. <laughs> you can remove the plate. Oh, see, that's the beauty of live premieres, isn't it? Making sure my needle is clear and my, my feed dogs are really high right now. That's probably not helping, is it? There we go. I lowered my feed dogs a little bit because they were kind of catching the bottom of that plate. But you can remove that off like that and then... Uh, uh, pull it out of the way like so so you can access that area for cleaning and for getting uh, lint and stuff out of there and then you just uh, rotate it back into position underneath those little pegs and again it's it's so much easier when you're not on camera seriously you just move it back into position and then you'll lower that uh, you'll lower that knob again. I'll kind of come out on the shot so you can see the knob that I'm talking about lowering. We're up wrong way. There we go. Kind of an awkward shot, but I'll leave it like that for now. So then you lower that, this, this controller right over here, and you'll see that drop back down again flush so that you can resume sewing again. So it's kind of neat, plus it has convenience of a drop-in bobbin uh, as well, which is really nice. And um, just uh, really a cool machine. This is from the 1960s, and uh, the 500A is one of many of the Slantomatic uh, versions that, that were out there. One of the last metal machines that Singer made. So it, uh, it's, uh, it's got that braking right as well. And uh, it's got the same type of motor as I say in the uh, um, the the uh, instant uh, premiere that I did, where I was talking about the motor challenges with this machine. And I don't know how long we're going to last here. We'll give it our best shot. Bubbles, bubbles everywhere. But uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to the Facebook shots first. That way, if my battery dies, at least you've seen those. So this is an opening shot of uh, Eric and Margaret's machine. Let me kind of zoom in. There 
There we go. Let me go standing still now. And I'm going to go through these rather quickly because the battery, again, is quite low. Uh, so just a beautiful machine. This is after some cleanup has been done on the machine. Uh, very sexy machine. Singer came out with these, uh, the Slatomatics, to compete directly with uh, the Necky brand out of uh, Italy. Uh, and again, you might remember Sophia Loren, a sex symbol of the day, was their spokesperson. Uh, for Singer and really did a fabulous job of trying to even the ground between those Italian beauties and these uh, incredibly beautiful Singer, uh, I call them cruise line type machines, but a lot of people call them Rocketeers as well. So there's our controller right there, anywhere from about uh, six stitches to 30 when you get into the fine range and then all the way to the top to sew uh, in reverse. A lot of control centers there. As I said, to access built-in cams, uh, the gold and the brown knob uh, can control that. And this will serve as needle position and also uh, as a stitch width. Well, you, know what, you know what that is. That's our upper tension. <laughs> There's our throat plate area and, again, our, our uh, needle bar. Come on. There's a very yucky-looking... Uh, uh, throat plate uh, riser and, and lower beautiful shot kind of looking down the machine this machine has uh, a control for uh, presser foot pressure right inside of the face plate along with a quick reference on upper uh, uh, threading for the machine which I think is really cool there's a closer shot of it right there Beautiful faceplate uh, emblem on this uh, model. Once I uh, change my camera shot, beautiful. <laughs> Which means you probably didn't see the previous one either, did you? Let me go back to that real quick. There's a better shot of that uh, controller for presser foot pressure and the quick reference diagram for threading. And you can see the bed down here in this shot. You'll see closer shots of it. It had just a gummy, tarry residue uh, that just really detracted from it. So I did spend time, again, you're not going to get it to your local sewing shop, but I spent quite a bit of time cleaning up the bed as well. There's the rear of the machine. You can kind of see uh, I left that ugly metallic uh, sticker from the sewing center on there just so that anyone that watched that instant premiere where I showed the the motor of this machine that we are premiering right now, smoking, and it had no power at all. They could see that it was the original machine, and it certainly is the original uh, motor as well. There's Dr. Singer getting into the mix, as he usually does. And by the way, he was dancing with, uh, with Mr. Bean and myself off camera. He's the cutest little guy. And there you might remember uh, when we did the unboxing on this machine, uh, these were broken. There were a number of pieces broken on this machine. What did I just do? Good gravy. Oh my goodness, I'm way off target now. See, that's what happens when you bump the wrong button. Daggone it. Come on. Here's Dr. Singer again. Checking the uh, inside uh, engineering of the machine. Very well engineered machine. There's the cam stack you can see right there for the machine. Those are for the built in stitches. And here you've got uh, a worm gear that interlaces with the balance wheel to give it direct drive and positive traction. It's all metal, uh, the worm gear is. So uh, you don't have to be concerned about doing heavy duty sewing and, and wearing that sucker out. It's not going to wear out. And that's obviously our bobbin, bobbin winding tire right there. You can see that cam stack closer up now and how dirty it was. No longer. Just more of the mechanics. That's just the top lid I took off. Here you're looking at the bottom of the machine. And you get to see how nasty those uh, worm gears. <clears throat> Got to adjust my shot again. I just don't have the right camera angle today apparently. Worm gears uh, have to be real clean and properly lubed, and uh, they definitely were not. There's another shot of the other worm gears on the other side of the machine. And there's our motor, 
and uh, our motor cover as well. Also, I'll show you real quick, I think I have time. Um, in different shots before, I've shown the lubricant that I use on those worm gears. And uh, I bleach it using other solvents with it, and it turns it white. So I've had people say, well, is that just regular Vaseline? It's not. And I'm going to stop bleaching it uh, with the other solvents so you can see what the original color is. This is something I came up with myself. If I can get my finger in the shot. It's actually red. This is a, a compound that I've developed that does a fabulous job of uh, lubricating uh, the worm gears long term. And uh, so I'm going to stop bleaching it. That way I, I stop getting the questions from people about, is that just Vaseline? Uh, no, it's not. But I know some people do try to use Vaseline on the worm gears. So here's our motor down here. Here's our opening. If you, again, I would really challenge you to check out that, uh, uh, that instant premiere that aired about 24 hours ago. So you can see this motor down here smoking. And you can see uh, the lack of power. Here's the bottom of the machine. Just different stamping that I captured in the uh, pictures. Cleaning up those worm gears so I can apply my special red... Uh, lubricant and this is the area here you'll see in that instant premiere that is on the on the same YouTube channel obviously and you can see that smoke was coming out of that area right there from the motor here's the motor brushes I pulled when I I uh, following that instant uh, premiere I went in here and tore this motor apart and I just found all kinds of crud in there I found that the motor brushes and other parts of the motor were incredibly filthy and also soaked with oil as well. And I suspect that someone from the top of the machine flooded it with too much oil, thinking more was better, and it got down into the motor, and it killed the motor. Here you can just see all the crud built up on that electrical field. And it becomes, uh, from the heat and the friction, it becomes caramelized, and you have to literally chip it away, which is what I'm doing with that dental tool. Just more shots of that motor utterly filthy. Here you're starting to actually be able to see that copper popping through again uh, as I'm getting those layers and layers and layers taken off. Here you can see the q-tip swab uh, just shrouded in that oily gooky mess that is just packing that motor out. On the left is a clean motor brush, on the right is a dirty motor brush and that's all part of the about 80 steps that I do in servicing a motor uh, I've only given a couple of pictures on Facebook of a few of those processes. Here's our uh, housing that the motor brushes go into. Uh, the one on the left is not clean. The one on the right you can see is clean. And there we've got those clean uh, sleeves that hold the motor brushes and clean motor brushes. And again, on motor brushes you only need about 5 millimeters uh, in order for that motor to run beautifully. And here you can see everything has been cleaned. And uh, the result, you're seeing it on this premiere today where a motor has been brought back to life. It's got all of its power restored. It's got reserve power, and it's ready to get the job done. And there you go. We actually made it. So if all of a sudden the camera dies, at least we got that part done. And this is the, uh, this is the premiere. I'm just going to show you real quick. This is the premiere that you're going to want to look for that was an instant premiere that showed that motor smoking and other stuff like that. Uh, you definitely want to check it out. I don't think I'm going to have time to show it to you this right now. This gauge can be used to measure the shape of irregular items to well, create a an commercial. instant template for marking precise Hold on. It so it's called Margaret, hey oh, Margaret and Eric Singer 501A video. is smoking. Uh, premiere. It, and it starts out just like you're release, seeing right uh, here. Just to document... Uh, as I'm launching into this uh, 500A, uh, it's one of the uh, Singer Slantomatic uh, machines, and it was sent to me uh, by my friends out in Mountain View, Wyoming. So again, uh, the title you're going to want to look uh, for, and then we're going to oh, bounce Margaret, back over to the machine real quick. My memory serves me correct, because this is reaching back a ways. Right here, uh, Margaret and Eric Singer January 501A is smoking, year. literally. Uh, my Much work uh, ahead, uh, but we will get it done. Are, are so this son. is the instant so, uh, premiere kind of it, that I want you to watch so you can appreciate. And uh, Margaret uh, 
you can appreciate where this machine was at and what you had the privilege to witness today with Margaret and uh, Eric's... Oh, that's cool. Hey, Cow Country Vintage Sewing Machines on Restoration. Sales service and repairs. Is that where Scott really is? I don't know. We should knock on the door and just see. But at any rate, really a, a privilege. And even though I was able to save um, the extra cost that Margaret and uh, Eric... Eric. Yeah, that's correct. Margaret and Eric would have incurred in me having to replace the motor. Um, the motor work that I had to do was well beyond what I would do with a general service and deep cleaning. So uh, they will incur some costs there, but much, much less, less than a brand new motor and the cost of the labor of installing the motor as well. So uh, I'm really thankful I was able to do that for them. So I don't know how this battery is still holding on. It's a miracle. But if it cuts all of a sudden, thanks for watching. I'll say that now while I still have an opportunity. And uh, let's see if we can sneak another sew off off. That would be so cool. And I'll show you inside of the cover here. If you didn't see it in the still shots, that quick reference that I'm talking about, I'm going to take the thread off real quick. That quick reference right there. So say, for example, if we want to do a straight stitch, it shows you set it on uh, AK and then the three is the stitch width that we're, we would be setting it on. So we would set uh, this knob, where am I? We would set this knob on three and then set the other two uh, knobs, uh, the left one on A and the right one on K. And then it gives you a couple of other ones. And then these are the other patterns right here that are built in as well, the BL, the BM, the BN, and so on and so forth. And the one I did real quick for you, uh, the building block one, but I didn't make it quite short enough, was the BP. Now we could try to sneak off a BR real quick, and if the camera dies, it dies. But uh, I'm gonna set the, uh, I'll actually show you. So we wanna set that at BR, and you have to zero out the stitch width uh, each time you're doing one of these uh, built-in uh, cam settings. And we also have to make an adjustment on the stitch width as well, because it has to be on four. Let me see if we, if we can if we can sneak this in. It'll be a miracle. It'll be a real cool miracle. So again, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing the little arch. It almost looks like a McDonald's arch. If we have time, if we can do it, I'm gonna close the lid. And I think that was BR, right? It should be BR. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. So the B is gonna be on this side, and we control that with the go one by. And I can't see if my camera's off even. There we go. We do that by zeroing out the stitch width, and then we have to move this to B, and it's already on B. Boy, that was easy. And then we have to move this one to R, and we do that by pulling the brown one, and then we move it up until we get to the R, which you probably can't see. And then we have to move the stitch width over to four, and the stitch length, which is off camera, I'm gonna shorten that just a little bit and we're gonna see if we can buzz this off real quick. If we get this off it'll be like wow that's crazy that the battery lasted that long. Okay so let's try this. Why not? Why not? So yeah you can see I moved this the stitch length which is this over here just slightly. Alright let's see if we can do this. This will be crazy if we can sneak this in. You see the first one we did on the left there which is really cool. I'm actually going to shorten this even a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Without delay. I got to go back the other way and just really throttle it for kicks and giggles. And it's going to look totally weird, and that's okay. But I want you to hear this motor now. Are you ready? And I'm going to give it probably about 50% power. Uh, screen's the wrong way again. Ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I want to put my music on again. Aren't those gorgeous? Aren't those gorgeous? I'm going to show them to you real quick in case my camera goes... Almost made like a Christmas tree. See that? The one on top? 
kind of go like this. Absolutely gorgeous stitching. Let me clip these real fast here. So again, make sure you check out that uh, Instant Premiere where this machine is, it's definitely not running like that. And it's smoking like a chimney. You got to check that out. You got to, you got to, you got to. And these are just gorgeous stitches right here. The spacing, the formation is absolutely spot on. And there's just no difference uh, with that lock stitch on the back. Absolutely drop dead gorgeous in every respect. Beautiful stitching. Ah, where am I? There I am. So I'm extremely pleased, uh, especially that the battery is held out too, which is way cool. We'll lay these uh, sew-offs out real quick. I do not know if the battery will last while I do this. If it doesn't, you've already seen them, so that's all fine and dandy. We will see what we see. Mr. Bean strutting his stuff again. So just a shout out to Eric and to uh, Margaret. Uh, I really appreciate you guys sending uh, your grandmother's machine uh, to the workshop so I could uh, have the privilege of bringing it back to life. There's our eight layers of uh, U.S. Army grade canvas. Look at that from the edge. It's just crazy. Kind of speeding us through here, folks. I'm sorry, it's faster. I usually take it real, real, real slow, and I just can't do that. Here's our, our decorative uh, uh, built-in cam stitches. And my camera is blinking. That's a bad sign, I'm sure. Here is our denim. I think we have three layers there. Beautiful stitching. All right, I think I'm about out of time, folks. Mr. Bean, why do you dance so much as soon as... Okay, I'm going to do this. We're going to end like this. Then if the camera dies, it's worth it. Here we go. Oh, I don't have it set up. Doggone it. Well, at any rate, it's been a privilege. It's been a real privilege to uh, have this uh, 500A uh, in the workshop. Uh, it's been great to dance with Mr. Bean today and to uh, have the opportunity to uh, see this 500A uh, with new vigor, uh, come back to life and just really, really do a fabulous job of uh, getting the job done. And I don't think I'm going to have time. I think I'm going to run hey out there. of time. Um, I'm just doing a quick uh, impromptu video. Yeah, we know, uh, we know. Premiere. We know. It's going to be an instant release. Uh, yes. Just a document. We know. Uh, as I'm we launching know. into... Music! Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Bean, let's wrap this up with a dance. Come on, baby. All of you behind the scenes right now, you've been stuck in the house. Get up off your bottom and let's do it. Come on. Yeah. I know I'm blocking you, Mr. Bean. All right, Mr. Bean gets the final limelight. I think the battery's just about ready to go. All right, Mr. Bean, finish it up. Finish it up, my friend. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, stay tuned for other great videos like this, where we see machines come back to life, we have fun dancing, and who knows, maybe Mr. Bean will appear again. God bless. Yeah. Come on, get up off the couch. Get up off of that office chair. Come on, little dance. 
Come on, you all. That's right. And he's got moves. Dig it down, Mr. Bean. Dig it down. All right, Eric and Margaret, thank you again. I'll be getting your machine ready real soon to head back to Mountain View, Wyoming. And this was the very first machine from Wyoming, by the way. Yeah. I cannot believe that battery is still holding on. It's, it's like blinking all over my screen going, dying, 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 dying. All right, we're just gonna keep on dancing till it dies. Come on, if you're still sitting, get up. If you're laying down, sit up and get up. Come on. Yeah, yeah that's it. can't believe it the battery lasted all the way through the end of that song that's crazy all right y'all take care god bless stay safe and uh remember we're gonna get through all of this we're already we're, we're already seeing a lot of this corona craze in the rear view mirrors so uh just keep loving life keep on sewing uh remember god's in control and uh thanks for being a faithful follower on this channel okay take care folks god bless bye